The second strategy that LGBT activists use is to claim that countries need to remove their buggery laws in order to decrease HIV AIDS among men who have sex with men because sodomy or buggery laws prevent men who have sex with men from getting HIV tests, condoms, and treatment. The AIDS Free World Internet publication of October 26, 2010 showed that there is a big difference in the HIV rates in Jamaica between men who have sex with men and the general population of 32% compared to 1.6%. AIDS Free World blamed the fact that Jamaica still has a buggery law for this huge difference. The Gleaner of Thursday, September 16, 2010, quoted Dr. Ernest Messiah, director of UNAIDS Caribbean Regional Support Team, as saying, and I quote, the stigma associated with HIV is linked to prejudice and rejection of what is perceived and judged as abnormal sexual behavior and wrongful sexual orientation. It is precisely these stigmas that threaten the public's health. End of quote. Note carefully that he is suggesting in order to fight HIV, we must accept all sexual activities as equally good and healthy. But is there evidence to support this claim? And is this approach used for any other disease? Let us examine the medical data. Fact one. In 2007, Singapore, after parliamentary review, decided to keep its buggery law for men. Yet men who have sex with men in Singapore have a low prevalence rate of 2.6% for HIV infections. Mexico, which removed its buggery law in 1871, has a 25% prevalence rate among men who have sex with men. Fact two, France removed this buggery law in 1791, over 200 years ago, and in 2000 was said by the World Health Organization to have the best healthcare system in the world. France has a prevalence rate for men who have sex with men that is higher than Singapore, varying between 12 to 17%. A study published by The Lancet, a most prestigious medical journal, reviewing new cases of HIV among men who have sex with men, heterosexuals, and intravenous drug users in France, reported that HIV was out of control among men who have sex with men. There were 1,006 new cases of HIV per 100,000 per year for men who have sex with men, compared to nine per 100,000 per year for heterosexuals. In light of what Dr. Messiah said and what we know about France, we need to ask the question, is there still stigma and prejudice in France over 200 years after the Bogri law was repealed? Or do we look, need to look for the real reason for the HIV rates in men who have sex with men? Could it have something to do with the fact that the anus, the lower end of the intestine, is not a sexual organ? In 2011, the Centers for Disease Control in the United States reported HIV and other sexually transmitted infections have been increasing among men who have sex with men for over two decades. But more importantly, they say this has occurred despite considerable social, political, and human rights advances. Fact four. In July 2012, an article in the Lancet acknowledged that the only group in the world among whom HIV rates have been increasing, irrespective of the income levels of the country's studies, is men who have sex with men. The above evidence shows that removal of the buggery law is neither necessary nor sufficient for decreasing the prevalence of HIV among men who have sex with men. When we wish to control heart attacks or high blood pressure, we identify the activity that carries the highest risk for the illness, and we discourage that activity. Criticism or disapproval of salt eating or smoking is not punished. Instead, we discourage unhealthy behavior because it not only harms those who practice it, but also causes a drain on the country's resources. Why then are we taking a different approach for HIV? Jamaica spent $592 million for HIV prevention between 2009 and 2011. 
How can we then fight for acceptance and approval of acts that increase the risk of infection at great cost to the nation? So, to summarize, LGBT activists are using two strategies to advance their agenda. The first, the trick of inventing rights and pretending that Jamaica is obligated to observe them. The second is the falsehood that we need to accept unnatural and unhealthy behaviors to control HIV among men who have sex with men. The goals of these strategies, the LGBT agenda, are sexual anarchy in the context of moral nihilism and autonomy of the individual, that is, to have no rules or restrictions on sexual acts. And secondly, to stifle disapproval or criticisms of these acts by using the law to punish dissenters.